I, I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people. And his mentor was Andre Lavelle. Tell, tell us how he was, was he mentored victimized. by Clyde Davis. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came about. So it looks like Diddy might be betraying his alleged sugar daddy Clive Davis and snitching on him to Homeland Security. Well, Diddy got caught up in a hot, high profile case with the feds, and it looks like they're about to have him on lock. The feds have allegedly been carrying out their investigation into Diddy for a long, long time now, and it looks like they finally have him right where they want him. But reports have it that Diddy is desperate to avoid jail, and he is giving up names of people who actually run the crime business in Hollywood, including allegedly Clive Davis. Diddy and Clive go way back, but it looks like Diddy is only after his own interest right now because he allegedly just got Clive in a whole lot of trouble with the feds. I'm not hating on him for getting money. Me either. I'm just hating on the way he got it. And I'm hating on the overall effect of what it's done. Y'all, they saying that Diddy is singing like a canary and he is determined to make sure that he doesn't go down alone for whatever they have him on. As it turns out, Diddy is not the only one involved in the crimes that he has been accused of by the feds because it's an alleged conspiracy and Diddy is snitching hard on everybody that is involved in this alleged conspiracy. Well, this is interesting because after Diddy's houses got raided, several people in the industry claimed that Diddy was being used as the fall guy for a conspiracy that involved several people, including some of the biggest elites in Hollywood. For example, Candace Owens tweeted, the feds are currently raiding Diddy's house. They already knew what he was up to, but he is going to be the fall guy so that they can protect people at the top of the ring. They are raiding his home to hide evidence, not to find it. That's how this works. But it looks like Diddy might be finally starting to realize this, and that's why he's been snitching his head off since the raids. In case you've been under a rock or something like that, Diddy has been in a lot of trouble for a very long time now starting with Cassie's lawsuit, and currently, Rodney Little Rod Jones' lawsuit. Now, we all thought that Little Rod was going to be the worst of it, but the next thing we knew, the feds were knocking on Diddy's door, carrying out a raid that they claimed was in a relation to a sex trafficking case, and Diddy's sons, Justin and Christian, were both detained. It's being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now, we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. And on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films. Which At first, we thought that Diddy had fled the country to the Caribbean because his private jet was seen in Antigua following the raid. But he was instead seen at Miami International Airport, where coincidentally his alleged drug mule was also arrested the same day. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. I know. See, this was just the start of the problem because the investigation did not end at the raids alone. If y'all know anything about the feds, it's that they are thorough with their investigations. And so y'all know that this case is far from being over. The investigation is still ongoing and right now, Diddy is facing a very long time behind bars, which would explain why he would be allegedly snitching on every single person involved in the conspiracy. They say he's singing like a canary. Now, there have been some names that have been thrown around this case, including Jay-Z, and there have been reports that Diddy has allegedly been snitching on Jay-Z, even though he and Jay-Z have been besties for many years. And if he's out here snitching on his besties, y'all can bet your bottom dollar that he's out here snitching on everybody else. And it's only a matter of time before his case busts it wide open, busted, 
busted. And do y'all know one name that's being tossed around in this mess? That's Mr. Clive Davis. That's who. The streets are now claiming that Diddy is allegedly striking a deal with the feds for a lesser sentence in exchange for giving them information on Clive Davis. And if there is someone who knows where all the bodies are buried when it comes to Clive, it's allegedly Diddy. Now, to those of you who haven't been tuned into the inner workings of the music industry, that's rewind a bit and dive into the long-standing relationship between Clive Davis and Diddy. Their story goes way, way back, back to Diddy's days at Uptown Records. Now, Uptown Records was run by Andre Harrell, but Clive Davis was the one with the deep pockets, even though Harrell was the face of the operation. So when Diddy was fired from Uptown Records after a tragic event at City College of New York, where nine lives were lost, he didn't just fade into the shadows, no sir. He had a plan. He pitched his bad boy records idea to Clive Davis. In a jaw-dropping twist, Clive not only backed Diddy, but pulled his support and funds from Uptown Records to help kickstart Bad Boy. Now you might be wondering, how did Diddy manage to swing such a deal, especially after such a public disaster? Well, according to reports, there's more to this story than meets the eye. According to people in the know, Diddy allegedly agreed to become Clive's boy toy, fulfilling his desires in exchange for fame and power. Now, usually what folks do behind closed doors is their business. I mean, if Diddy and Clive want to do their thing, they're grown adults, right? But according to insiders, their escapades went way beyond your regular hookups. Allegedly, they were knee deep in some seriously shady dealings. For many years, fans have been pointing fingers squarely at Clive Davis for the tragic demise of Whitney Houston. Now, before you roll your eyes, let's really unpack this a bit. Whitney's death was back in 2012, and it sent shockwaves through the industry. And to this day, it's still shrouded in mystery. At the time, Whitney was set to perform at Clive Davis's pre-Grammy bash at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills on February 11, 2012. But in the days leading up to the event, things took a bizarre turn. Reports surfaced of Whitney acting all sorts of strange after meeting with Clive. Several media outlets reported that she appeared disheveled and disoriented, with what looked like sweat running down her face and blood dripping down her leg. Now, two days after this, she was found unconscious in a bathtub and she passed away. Just before the party kicked off, Whitney's assistant stumbled upon her lying face down in the tub unresponsive. Panic set in, she called Whitney's bodyguard, Ray Watson, to help her get Whitney out of the tub. He later told the mirror that the scene in the bathroom was surreal, and he panicked because he couldn't understand what happened to Whitney. I couldn't tell if she was alive or dead, he said. I got her out of the water and tried to revive her, then it was all crazy. Whitney's assistant and her bodyguard revealed that they called 911 and the paramedics arrived at Whitney's hotel room. They performed CPR, but sadly, it was too late. 3.55 p.m., Whitney was pronounced dead. We have breaking news tonight out of Los Angeles, the death of singing star Whitney Houston at the age of 48. Details are still coming in, but her publicist has confirmed her death to the Associated Press, although the circumstances and the place are not clear. Now, the cause of Whitney's death wasn't immediately known, and the local police said that there were no obvious signs of criminal intent. However, after conducting an autopsy and running toxicology tests, the LA County Coroner's Office concluded that Whitney's death was caused by drowning, combined with the effects of heart disease and cocaine use. Now, this is where things got really shady, though. The autopsy report noted that there were some external trauma on Whitney's body. The coroner ruled that there were no signs of foul play. Also, Clive not canceling the party after he got information of Whitney's death raised a whole lot of eyebrows and it had lots of people pointing accusing fingers at him. Clive then revealed that he didn't end the party because he wanted it to be a tribute to Whitney because that's what she would have wanted him to do. And he also insisted that Whitney's family didn't ask him to cancel the party. Why did you let the party go on? Of course, this is a personal thing, but the Grammys were the next night. You don't cancel. You turn an evening into a tribute. You oh, you did a magnificent evening. Evening into... Did you give a thought to canceling? Never. You never thought? Never. 
Could you, ever. did you ever think? I know, the family did not want me to give a thought. Didn't? You can't, no. But then Whitney's autopsy was filled with lots of inconsistencies because it seemed like there was a lot of external trauma to her body. And according to reports, there were superficial abrasions to the left side of her forehead and the bridge of her nose. She also had cuts on her left arm, hand, and shoulder. And then the final autopsy didn't make any sense because the pathologist, Cyril Wecht, revealed that the water in the tub where she died was close to boiling point, which made it practically impossible for her to sit in. He said, I think that this lady fell into the water. She was unconscious, dead, or dying when she fell into the tub. I do not believe that the death was due to drowning. Then there's this super disturbing report from a private investigator that revealed that Whitney had some defense wounds on her body. And Jaguar Wright has also backed this up, insisting that Whitney didn't die in the bathtub like we were told. Her, she was beat. They saw her body. She didn't just die in a tub, like she was beat. But speaking of Jaguar Wright, she has also come out in the past to accuse Diddy and Clive Davis of being involved in a little something. Y'all remember how I said that Clive withdrew his support from Andre Harrell at Uptown Records and chose to support Diddy and set up Bad Boy Records? Well, considering the incident that happened when people died in an event that was hosted by Diddy at City College of New York, there was no way that Diddy should have gotten a deal. Especially since Clive himself has admitted that he had no faith in Diddy at that start. He said, Sean Combs convinced me that Top 40 was going to embrace hip hop. It seemed so unlikely then. When he played me Craig Max 1994 Flavor in Your Ear and Notorious B.I.G. material when he was totally unknown, this 21 to 22 year old guy was seeing clearly how music was changing. Yeah, it didn't make that much sense though, Clive. According to Jaguar, it's because Clive allegedly used to S.A. Andre, who in turn allegedly groomed Diddy. I honestly think he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor, who loved to control people. And his mentor was? Andre Rell. Tell, tell us how he was, was mentored by Clyde Davis. When it comes to why Clive decided to fund Bad Boy Records, Jaguar revealed something very interesting. God, it don't tell me that Andre Harrell got touched by Clive Davis too. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and, and, and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like, wow. how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like, Puff started out as an intern. Allegedly, Diddy pulled a shady move and went behind Andre's back, cutting him out of the equation and cozying up to Clive as his top boy toy. Yeah, you heard that right. This alleged love triangle gone wrong shed some light onto why Clive was willing to bankroll Diddy at a time when the industry was side-eyeing him. Remember, we're talking about a time when nine lives were lost under Diddy's watch. Y'all, this was a whole lot to unpack. Between the allegations of Diddy being Clive Davis's boy toy and him allegedly helping him get away with Whitney Houston's murder, well, let's just say that Clive is going to be in a whole lot of trouble if Diddy manages to strike a deal with the feds. While it isn't illegal to be on the down low and have an affair, there is no statute of limitations on murder. Looks like we're going to be getting a lot of tea in these coming weeks because things are about to get messy as F. And of course the fans have been talking. They've been saying things like, Clive Davis needs to be investigated as well. Sean should be incarcerated now. What Jaguar is saying makes so much sense. I knew Clive had everything to do with what Diddy has been doing. And it's so crazy because if we're backtracking to Clive Davis days, then Diddy was also a young man who was groomed by his mentors. It's a wild cycle of generational chaos that's forever tied to that disgusting industry. Do y'all think that Diddy's gonna spill his tea? And should Diddy be in jail already? Cause it seems like he out here roaming free. Drop your thoughts in comments below and then check out this next video.